Before we get into the video today, you, you know what? I feel like it's time for a change. I've had this hair way too long, but how do I do it? I have an idea. Here it goes. <sighs> wow, that's better. That feels lighter. Before we get into the video, it's come to my attention that some of you who rang the bell haven't been getting notifications from YouTube. To remedy this, I've created a brand spanking new mailing list that will send out a weekly update for all Science Guy content. To sign up, check the link in the description and comments, and be sure to check your spam folder or promotions tab to confirm your email address. This year, we've seen a lot of headlines about asteroids nearly missing the planet. Well, that's not really surprising at all, as pretty much every news agency and clickbaity tabloid website use asteroid flybys as a way to get cheap clicks and views. But this type of news hits a little harder this year, since NASA performed a simulation of an asteroid impact in Europe that failed miserably. And unfortunately for our already shattered nerves, thanks to the ongoing pandemic that is spawning sequels faster than the Fast and Furious franchise, we're not done with these close encounters of the Hey, computer, what's a good pun for close encounters of the third kind? Computer? I even saw a video claiming that three asteroids were on a collision course for the Pacific Ocean at some undetermined point this year. So obviously people seem to be a little more concerned about asteroids and comets, but how much danger are we really in? Well, let's find out. But before we jump in, be sure to do the thing and drop me a like, comment, and a sub. I'm Eric Malachite, author of Echoes of Olympus Mons, and this is Science Cat. We hear the term potentially hazardous a lot, and it does sound a little unnerving when news and even science websites lead with that phrase. But what exactly does potentially hazardous mean? In June of this year, an object called 2021 KT-1 flew by the Earth at a distance of 3.5 million miles, 5,632, 704 kilometers, and was labeled as potentially hazardous. But how big was 2021 KT-1? Well, according to NASA, it was around 150 meters, or 492 feet in diameter, which is, believe it or not, fairly large. But what makes it hazardous? Well, NASA considers any object around 150 meters, 50 feet or larger that passes within 7.5 million kilometers or 4.6 million miles of the Earth to be potentially hazardous. An asteroid labeled as a city killer in July of 2019 passed within six Earth diameters and a blistering speed of 61 times greater than the speed of a commercial jet. And that asteroid was only 100 meters or 328 feet wide. A city killer basically means that if the potentially hazardous asteroid in question hits the Earth, and it also happens to impact with a city too, then that city would probably be wiped out. But here's the thing. The object that exploded over Chelyabinsk, Russia was only 20 meters wide. Yeah, a lot smaller than some of those potentially hazardous objects. To put this in perspective, the latest estimate for the size of the comet that wiped out all non-avian dinosaurs is around 10 to 15 kilometers wide. That impactor created the Chicxulub Crater, which is 150 kilometers in diameter and still visible to this day. There is a fantastic video that demonstrates what we'd experience and see in the night sky if such an object were to be on a collision course with the Earth today. Watching it was a surreal and disturbing experience due to just how realistic it is. I've linked to it in the description and I encourage you to give it a look after you finish this video. But I think an even better measure for the kind of destruction that a potentially hazardous asteroid could cause is the 2013 explosion of the Chelyabinsk meteor over Russia. Something we've mentioned, but have never really had the chance to do a deep dive on until now. Now, the Chelyabinsk meteor was considered to be a super bolide which basically means an extremely bright meteor that has entered the Earth's atmosphere as a fireball. And this meteor was certainly very bright. When it passed over the southern Ural region of Russia, the light coming off the thing was brighter than the sun. Some eyewitnesses even felt intense heat coming from the superheated meteor. 
Now, due to the Chalybinx meteor entering the Earth's atmosphere at a very high velocity and shallow angle, it exploded as an airburst over the city of the same name with a blast yield of about 500 kilotons of TNT, which is about 33 times the energy that was released from the atomic bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima. In fact, the comet or asteroid that hit the Earth 65 million years ago also impacted at a shallow angle of 60 degrees, which is thought to be the deadliest angle that an impactor can take. In a recent video, which is linked in the description and in the top right corner of this video, we talked about all the asteroid impacts that we've experienced since the beginning of the 2000s, which are also measured in kilotons. But Chilibinks was the largest impact, the most punch as well, as most of those impacts talked about in that video were around 5 kilotons in explosive power. Though I could find no reference to whether or not Chilibinks was considered to be a city killer asteroid, it still caused a lot of damage. Remember when I mentioned that some eyewitnesses felt extreme heat while observing the fireball? Well, it was also observed over a wide area and in neighboring regions as well. The explosion generated an extremely bright flash and produced a cloud of heated dust and gas that penetrated to 26.2 kilometers. 16.3 miles, though most of its energy was absorbed by the Earth's atmosphere. The meteor's explosion created a huge shockwave that also scattered meteor fragments across the city. The most frustrating thing, though, is that this meteor was completely undetected before it entered the atmosphere, and this has been attributed by NASA to be due to its radiant, or source direction, being very close to the sun. The explosion caused panic in the residents of Chilibinks, and injured about 1,500 people bad enough to cause them to seek medical treatment. Windows were blown out and some 7,200 buildings in six cities across the region were damaged by the shockwave. With a mass estimated to be around 12,000 to 13,000 tons, the Chilibinks meteor is the largest object to be detected entering the Earth's atmosphere since the Tunguska event in 1908. So that's pretty alarming, I know. But let's follow up this breakdown with a list of the hazardous objects that have passed the Earth in 2021 and some coming attractions. In 2021, we've had at least 95 near-Earth objects, or NEOs for short, pass within Earth-Moon distance. But thankfully, most of these objects have been estimated to be no larger than 30 meters in diameter, and really only 11 of those were estimated to be over 20 meters in diameter. But what about the NEOs that are expected to make an intimate approach later this year? An Apollo-class asteroid named 2016 AJ-193 will be passing the Earth at a distance of 3,427,445 kilometers. When it does, it will be the largest asteroid to pass us this year, at least so far. Its diameter is 1.37 kilometers, and is obviously one of those illustrious, potentially hazardous asteroids. The moon is about 384,399 kilometers from Earth, so this asteroid will pass at a distance that is about 8 to 9 times Earth-Moon distance. So we don't really have to worry about this one. According to NASA, 2021 PA-1 will be passing us on August 8th, which by the time this video airs will have already passed. This object is only about 14 meters large, though the NASA site I got this information from does not specify diameter versus length. This object will be passing at a distance of 803,063 kilometers. But on the same day, two other asteroids will be passing the Earth as well. The first is 2021 PP, a 52-meter or airplane-sized asteroid that will be passing us at a distance of 1,609,344 kilometers. And the second is called 2021 PZ-1, which weighs in at 21 meters in length and will pass at a distance from the Earth of 3,862,426 kilometers. Next up, on August 9th, a 34-meter-long space rock called 2021 PN-1 will be passing the Earth at a distance of 922,154 kilometers. And lastly, on August 10th, a 30-meter-long object called 2021 PM-1 will be passing the Earth at a distance of 2,172,614 kilometers. While JPL is only listing the next five objects to make a close approach to the Earth, you can bet that by the end of the year, many, many more objects within these size ranges may pass the Earth, and some of them will probably go undetected before passing us. But what if one of these potentially hazardous asteroids actually was on a collision course with the Earth? Would we be able to stop it? Well, NASA recently took part in a tabletop-style scenario to see if it would in fact be possible. And the results? Not great. A 
A week-long scenario led by NASA saw U.S. and European space agencies facing a hypothetical asteroid impact scenario. The scenario started with the announcement that an asteroid had been detected at a distance of 56,327,040 kilometers. The scientists were told that the asteroid would hit the Earth in six months. More details about the asteroid's size, trajectory, and chance of impact would flood in on a daily basis. The scientists had to work together to see if there was a way to stop the asteroid before it hit the Earth. And they failed. The group determined that none of the Earth's existing technologies could stop the asteroid from hitting us in the allotted time frame. In this scenario, the asteroid crashed into Eastern Europe. Now, no such asteroid is on a collision course with the Earth, at least none that we've detected. But it's estimated that two-thirds of asteroids 140 meters or larger have yet to be detected. Running simulations like this could help us develop new measures and technologies to help us in the event that a doomsday object sets its sights on Earth. The biggest issue is time. Missions to the International Space Station take at least 12 to 15 months to plan, and that's for manned missions just to the ISS. For missions involving satellites and probes, it can take several years. That's because those missions have to be very precise in their calculations, and rigorous tests need to be performed on the equipment being launched into space. To quote the Martian for the fifth or sixth time, what? I love the Martian. Fight me. Space is dangerous. One commenter on launch.imanastronaut.uk who claims to have submitted a proposal to the ESA for a space-based scientific experiment said that from pitch approval to the engineering process, it's taken them nearly six years to bring the project close to completion. Six years. The video I mentioned earlier shows the Chicxulub asteroid to be no brighter than any other star a mere year before impact, and only becomes truly noticeable in the night sky about a month before impact. 2021 PDC, the fictional asteroid that struck Eastern Europe during the scenario, was spotted on April 19th and given a 5% chance to hit the Earth on October 20th. By day two of the exercise, it was revealed that 2021 PDC was almost certain to hit Europe or North Africa, and the participants, or players I guess, scrambled to propose any missions to space that might be able to redirect the thing off its path. But they didn't just fail. The teams each determined that six months simply wouldn't be enough time to get a mission off the ground before Judgment Day came to pass. Nukes were also in uncertainty as the object was estimated to be about 34 meters to 0.80 kilometers in diameter. Large asteroids are far less likely to even be dented by a nuclear explosion, though the team did suggest that it might reduce the chances of impact. In this scenario, the asteroid impacted with the explosive force of a large nuclear weapon, hitting near the border of Germany and the Czech Republic. The only thing that the team was able to do was evacuate those regions. Now, such a scenario probably wouldn't end our species, but it would be a massive tragedy that would more than likely have far-reaching consequences for society and maybe even the world's economy. As an example of an object that, if detected on a collision course with Earth, would be extremely bad news for us, Comet Neowise, a nearly 5-kilometer wide object, passed within 102,998,000 kilometers of the Earth. While that's a relative safe distance, you have to keep in mind that no one knew of the comet's existence before it passed us this year. So bad news, right? Well, NASA hopes this will be a temporary problem. For the past two years, they've been working on a new space-based telescope called the Near-Earth Object Surveillance Mission that they hope will bolster our ability to detect and monitor these hazardous objects. The ESA is also working on new telescope technology to aid in this goal as well. NASA is also hard at work developing methods for diverting deadly asteroids from Earth. These methods range from detonating powerful explosive devices near an object, using the gravity of spacecrafts to nudge the objects off course, and firing lasers at it that could vaporize material off the asteroid and change its path. But the strategy that NASA thinks has the best chance of working is to take a large spacecraft and just ram it into an oncoming asteroid. They're actually going to test this approach for real in the fall of next year. Yeah, that sounds really metal. Pun intended. If you dug this content, be sure to drop me a like and comment down below how you think we could avoid disaster if an asteroid were on its way to hit us. And be sure to smash that subscribe button, ring that bell to never miss an episode of the show, and check out the Patreon while you're at it. Speaking of which, look at all those wonderful names. Thank you, patrons. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time.